It's recording time. Hi, I'm Steven. I'm here at my house and I got a very special treat with you. I am here with the one and only Matt Hill. Wow, Matt Hill is here? What? What are you talking about, man? How does that, how did you, who, who, I'm with you. That's who I'm with. How you doing, brother? Very good. Anyway, Matt, I speak for an entire millennial generation that grew up with this whole, whole, whole no. like, all I can say is, you know, thank you for very, uh, very much for being a part of our childhoods. Well, it, uh, it, uh, myself and Ed, um, as well as um, uh, Double D and Eddie um, and uh, Plank and the Caker Sisters uh, and Sarah and Jimmy and Johnny and Kevin, everybody, um, everybody just said um, hello um, through me. OK, I talked to them earlier and that's what they all said. But Plank actually said this. I knew it. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. But how is everybody doing in America land today? Well, we're all doing OK, except, yeah. you know, we got a little trying to figure out how we're going to vote right now. It's like, can't we just yeah. hire the Eds to deliver our voting? <laughs> <laughs> can't you? Brother, yeah. I, know you know I know Eddie would do that. <laughs> totally. If I could just like, you know, like me and Ed and everybody, we just like be able to go, OK, now just deliver down to here and go over there. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah. I would just give everybody gravy cakes and, you know. Yeah, jawbreakers. Now, for my first question is, uh, how'd you came up with the voice for Ed? Like, how'd you? What, what are your influences for the voice? Uh, you know, it's wild. Uh, we had um, this show was amazing because um, the creator Danny had it all in his head, and he didn't let anything go until he would heard what he was looking for or what he'd heard in the you know in the back section of his brain for all these characters. Um, and for me, it was like we were on callback, like I think I think officially callback number seven. Mm -hmm. And the three Eds were in the studio together. So we kind of thought, oh, OK, we're all back together again, like me and Tony and Sam. Mm -hmm. And they kept giving us all these, you know, lines and stuff to do. But, you know, Danny just he wasn't hearing it. And he was, you know, just going like, ah, oh, well, get them to do something different. And, you know, and, 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 you know, we're all thinking like we were one step away from basically like, you know, <laughs> off you go. You get thrown out into the studio of, you know, has been audition for. Um, and so like out of desperation, I, I don't know why I did this because as an, as an actor, you don't do this. You don't like you don't touch the mic. But I literally I just went like. I, I put my hand on near the mic and I went, doom, doom, doom. right. Yeah. So I was like, doom, doom, doom. and I saw the I saw the, you know, studio engineer going like, what, what did he just do? And I'm like, uh, uh, excuse me. Um, how do you get water from this thing here? Mm -hmm. And then I see Danny go, what? Oh my God. Did you get that? Did you record that? You know, I see the engineer going like, yeah. Cause I'm thinking, Oh my God, I'm going to get, I'm going to get fired before I get hired. Mm -hmm. um, and he goes, play him that what he just did. So, you know, they play it back for me, you know, and I hear boom, boom, boom. How do you get water from this thing? And literally Danny said, you do that and don't stray from that. And every time you go away from that, we'll play that line for you till you get the voice of Ed, because that's the voice of Ed. So for, so for whatever I did, um, that was, you know, that was what he'd heard, you know, as kind of like Ed coming out of left field. Right. Um, and so it, it was really neat because, you know, after that, they said, you know, learn the learn the script, but don't like learn the lines um, because then it just allowed a lot of spont spontaneity. And stuff. That's a tough word. Spontaneity. Uh, did you came up with any of Ed's catchphrases like butter toast or was that oh, the writers? Oh, yeah. No, the expert, amazing writers that were on our show absolutely in fact we were very much instructed to stick to the like stick to the script stick to the the breath stick to the and stick to the you know like every once in a while they, we, they'd let us maybe get away with putting something extra in most of the time not like mm -hmm. if we thought oh i'm an actor i'll add something right mm -hmm. it's like uh no <laughs> yeah, I know that some some creators they want to stick to the script and they oh, don't yeah. allow improv unless yeah. you're Robin Williams. <laughs> wow, well, yeah, and you know, I mean, Robin Williams, wow, like what a genius, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, I, I think anybody would is honored to have Robin Williams like go off in their studio. So mm -hmm. you know, it's uh, like like what was it like forty hours or so worth of you know outtake footage from Good Morning Vietnam. Uh, that also Aladdin. I know in Aladdin it was over sixteen hours, which ooh. like that's just crazy. It's amazing. Ah, yeah. Rest in peace, Robin yeah. Williams. Yeah. Uh, hey, 
Yeah, and also for the show, what was, like, it, the show is, like, so funny. Like, what's, like, what do you think is, like, the strongest strength? Was it because of the slapstick or the dialogue or the animation? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's one of those things, I think, that it was sort of, like, a perfect scenario mm-hmm. of a, a lot of different things coming together to kind of, like, just kind of collide. It's, like, the perfect storm in a river mm-hmm. you know, creativity. Um, you know, and also, too, I really had it to my fellow castmates, obviously, um, as well as Danny Antonucci and the creative team, because, you know, really it, it was, it was this mad creation process, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, I, we just saw the recording side of it and that was like four hours of the most like, you know, uh, you know, vocal cord, like, you know, bleeding <laughs> four hours of every like Tuesday or Thursday when we were, would record. Mm-hmm. Right. And then the rest of it would go back to the studio and all these different places where they put it together. And, you know, it was, uh, oh yeah, it was amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And of course, like to me, I think the most depressing episode was when the Eds, we see them as getting old. Like, I don't know why, but that does just something about it just makes me like always feel sad. Like, what do you think was the most depressing moment in the show? Um, well, uh, when, uh, double D, um, <laughs> told, uh, the Kanker sisters that, oh, I can't tell you that part. Sorry. That was for, I was, yeah, I was, I was told I would be off. This. No, I don't know. You know what? It's, it's funny because I think maybe, you know, in some respects, the last day is always a little sad, mm-hmm. you know, because even though in some respects it was really cool because it was cathartic in a way, because we are you know, we're all going off on a different adventure, you know, but it really kind of felt like it really was the end of a really special, mm-hmm. you know, eight years really. Um, you know, really when we kind of put it all together. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I mean, those two are really still super amazing friends, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and, uh, so like you say, we get this lasting brotherhood, you know, from doing a show together. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. And of course, you know, most of the time you guys would say get together at a comic con. Do you do like cons together with any of the other cast members? Cause I know you did one with, uh, with Sam, a uh, double D at brony cons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we did a few. Um, I mean, the rest of the, I, I think it's funny because as they were kind of going as, as a group, you know, when the show was actually on like early, early, early on, um, I didn't end up going to those ones. Um, and, uh, and so then, yeah, I just got invited afterwards, you know, so, so I'm not sure why, you know, um, but uh, no, we never ended up. That was the one thing I think, you know, when you say what was sad mm-hmm. is it I think it would have been amazing if we could have had one convention appearance where the whole cast mm-hmm. went and, you know, got to just, you know, have this memory together. Right. And, you know, meet people, but, uh, you know, you never know, yeah. you know, well, I do press at a lot of comic cons and I'll like fight for that to happen. Like I'm like, tr- I've been trying to like meet you guys at one of them. It wasn't until like last year's when I started doing them out of California. So I feel like I could meet either one of you guys. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. 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 You tell us, give us an address, and we will be there, brother. I'll do that. In yeah. fact, now, speaking of sad, like, to some people, they think that the darkest episode in the entire series is when Ed turns into a monster, and it's like, that wasn't dark. I mean, it was just, yeah. like, funny. <laughs> it was. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. There was a really a dark bone in Ed's body, really, I don't think. Yeah. You know? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, of course, yeah. like, uh, let me see. Now, one thing I do credit the show is that the show never like really jumped the shark, like say introduce a new kid to the group or anything like that. Like, you ever knew why Dan Antonucci chose not to in- introduce like newer characters? Yeah, I think you know, like I say, like that was really he just knew that this is what it was. This is what you know who's going to be part of it. These are the characters. Here's what they're going to do. This is what they're going to not do. You know, um, so it was very, very like it was like brain surgery mm-hmm. uh, of creativity because it was just so like in like so deep, but also so like creatively. Um, uh, I don't know what's the word. It was yeah. It was really it was like laser surgery, yeah. right? You know. Um, so I don't even know if that made sense. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad. Like you know, the show didn't exactly lose its edge or anything like that, which is like good. Now, yeah. one thing. Now, did you ever ne- notice that during the show's run, there wasn't like a lot of merch? And of course, now shirts like these, you could get them like Coles or whatever. But one thing yeah. I'm looking for are Funko Pops. Ooh, wow. Like, like I remember one time Funko tweeted them saying like, "Which pops do you want next?" And I said, "Edit and Eddie." Like, and I like I got a hundred likes on that, and it's like, make it happen, Funko. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure why we didn't do you know a ton of. 
ton of merchandise. If that was your question, yeah. Yeah, like why did um, a lot of merch? Like, yeah. I think the only thing we got was the video game, of course, which I played yeah. that religiously when it first came out. Oh yeah, no kidding, heck yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, I think you know maybe it was just that maybe it was the time too. I mean, I have no idea, you yeah. know, to be honest with you, because that's those are conversations I wasn't part of. So you know, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. usually something between the network and these uh, stores that yeah. want to make merch, and of course now more than ever, like this merch just. Ha- is sold more like i'm like waiting for you to box lunch or hot topy to make more, like specific edge shirts like i was at a con and someone was selling a custom-made edge shirt that just said what are those and i like <laughs> ah, i forgot to go awesome. back for it yeah 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 i know this um this gal at a con mm-hmm. um she brought over a, literally a buttered toast mm-hmm. right like it was a little plushy mm-hmm. buttered toast mm-hmm. and i wish to this day that I would have got one, but I literally signed them all away. Uh, but you know, that was, I was thinking that that is like the coolest thing, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, uh, what else? Let me see. Now, of course, uh, you and Sam Vincent were also in a, my, in a, my little pony show. What's it like being a part of another show that has like an adult following, you know, bronies and you get mm-hmm. fascinated. Like, even though it's meant for kids, like adults love it too. Like, yeah. like, I mean, I'm an adult and I still love the ads. Yeah. Well, you know what? You nailed it. It's like, it's just reverse. That's you just happen to love Ed and Eddie growing up on it. And then I think that there's something about the, the ponies that, you know, some, some adults go like, Oh my God, this is really, really great. Right. And so, you know, then they got their posse and, you know, everybody, you know, feels like they belong to a community. And, you know, I think there's, there's a lot of that too, you know, because I think people, whether you're a young kid or say an adult, you know, with a kid at heart, right. Um, you know, I think that's where, you know, you always feel like you have a connection with other people that way too. Right. You know, so yeah, 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 that's how I always feel whenever I go to cons. Anyway, another question. Yeah. Now you you are a passionate marathon runner. Be honest. Whenever you're running, do you ever run like Ed does, like this? <laughs> oh, oh. All the time, my friend. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just finished marathon sixty eight. Mm-hmm. Um, I so I've gone just over almost three thousand kilometers since uh, I guess April twenty second was when I started. Um, mm-hmm. Because before COVID nineteen. I was slated to run around North America again. So I was going to go from my house in Vancouver across Canada and then around the perimeter of the of America. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then obviously when, you know, the world got shut down with, you know, um, with this virus, mm-hmm. um, I had to read tool. So in the spirit of just like Ed would say, like, kick my feet and just keep going. Um, I literally have. So I, like I say, I started on earth day and, um, I've done a marathon um, at, well, I do them over 21 days at a time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I take a week off and then I do a 21 more. So I've done 68 of them yeah. um, so far. So, yeah. yeah. And my goal is to cover, cover the planet mm-hmm. um, in however many years it takes me. It will probably take me a few years mm-hmm. to do it, but you know, um, I think of Ed isms a lot. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, we cheer you on. Like I'm hoping one day, maybe I could participate in a marathon. Like the closest Absolutely. I've ever gone was like, there was a time in my life where I had to walk home like seven hours and it was like, hey, of course, like, yeah, like, I feel like I hope I could do it one day. But yeah, of course, you know, yeah. like it could be like dangerous, but it's like, especially you have to like prepare, like be on a good diet and, uh, you know, exercise. And especially if you're like, Though obviously you got to stretch, but like you know, like uh, you got to run properly, or else your knees would just give out. Which is- yeah, yeah, oh for sure. You know, it's one of those things you just kind of work yourself up, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I definitely wouldn't say if someone's not a runner per se that they just go out and say, okay, tomorrow I'm going to run a marathon. Um, you know, because they'd probably be out there for 24 hours. Um, but you know what? The body's an amazing thing, man. You know, you just set that goal and then put one foot in front of the other start, start small, start wherever you are. Right. Um, and before you know it, you've done 55,000 steps and that's a marathon, son. So, you know, yeah. 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 And my final question before I go on to my fan questions, is like, uh, you also do Ted talks. Like I think one you did called the hero's journey, where'd you get like the inspiration to give those kind of motivational speeches? Yeah. Well, that was actually based on, um, part of obviously my life in cartoons, but also, um, a run that I did around North America. Uh, called Run for One Planet. Um, and so it was kind of taking these two loves, which for me are the peop- are people, the planet, and, um, and running, um, and really put them all together and say, okay, how can we make a difference, right? Kind of shining our light and being the hero inside us. 
um, you know, while we then also honor other people shining their light and being the hero inside them. Right. Yeah. Well, that's very inspirational. I was oh, just thanks, man. By that. Yeah. Hey, wait. Now here goes my fan questions. Is uh one asks is uh what was one of the best bloopers from recording the ads? Oh, <laughs> um, can we swear on the show? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, we can swear. Okay. Uh, well, someone, and I will not say who it was. <laughs> um, one time I was so like, we, cause like you say, sometimes I, we would take on the record of who had to get the most takes mm-hmm. because if any didn't hear it, what he, the way he wanted, he'd be like, no, do it again. Right. So, you know, this one particular day I couldn't get this laugh. It was just a simple laugh, you know, like they would say, just laugh, laugh like Ed. And I'm like, oh, 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 oh. you know, and I was like, literally it was probably, I don't know, maybe 25 takes. And I finally, I just like, I bashed my head against the studio door and I, and I did explanative, like I probably swore for probably three minutes. <laughs> and, you know, just like, right. And then, yeah. And then I'm like, oh, okay, I'm good to go now. And then I got the line and I laughed and it was fun and it was great, you know? So, yeah. 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 Ooh, interesting. Anyway, now a subscriber asks us, he feels like you don't get asked about this. What was it like vo- voicing Wiz on Make Way for Nobody? Was it voicing Wiz on Make Way for Nobody? Good? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. I mean, pretty much everything I get to do is pretty fun. So um, is there anything like specifically on? I guess like your experience voicing the character, because I mean, yeah. I'm not really familiar with this character or show. Yeah, you're yeah, in. yeah, yeah. Um, no, I mean, you know, like I say, I mean, I get a chance for me. It's always just a, I mean, obviously being an actor, it's nice to go to work every day. So it's really nice to get different characters and stuff. So um, my apologies that I don't have a deep, you know, long answer on that one. But um, yeah, I mean, you know being in this for 30 years, uh, I still do a backflip every time I get a gig. So, um, hopefully that answers the question. So it's like, yes, I enjoy it very, very much. <laughs> well, I think my subscriber will appreciate it. Anyway, here's another one, but yeah, this is like one of those, who's your favorite child kind of questions. Like, who do you like voicing more Ed or Bass from Mega Man? Oh, wow. Ed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I like Bass too. I mean, you know, he's a good character. He's a badass. Yeah. He's a badass. He's good. Yeah. Here's like my final question. I mean, oh wait, not oh wait, this is like my last two final questions. Anyone, was there ever a a, a character, a role you auditioned for but didn't get it but really wanted it? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. You know, I mean there's sometimes there's there's roles. I mean, I've always been a firm believer that you, you know, you get the roles that you're meant to get. Uh and there's a few of them that like you almost got. Cause I was down to the wire and yeah, definitely there's a couple of those where I was just like, oh, oh, I wanted to do that part, you know? Um, cause you know, you kind of get that little, you know, you get the whisperings of like, I think you might get this one. Um, you know, so uh, yeah, I mean, obviously it's like, you know, um, it, it's always in the same thing too. It's just always great to get a new gig and, you know, continue to be an actor and, you know, live this life. Right. Yeah, that's all what we all strive for. Like, it's not not like, say, being an actor, but, you know, it's like, you know, like just, you know, working hard and like hoping you get your, you know, pay off your deeds. Like for myself, like I went from like interviewing smaller guests. Now for you, you're like definitely been like one of my top wish lists. And, you know, thank you for. Uh, oh, my pleasure, brother. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, um, this is what it's all about. Right. It's, you know. Um, I, I, you know, I think in some respects, probably my biggest learning in the last few years is if you don't ask, you'll never know. Right. So like that same thing like that, when someone says like, Hey, they wanted to say, have me on a show or this or something. Right. So, um, so thank you for asking, uh, cause it's an honor to be a part of it. Thank right, thank you. You. Anyway, my final uh, question is like, can you finally address why there was no adults in the show? Like why didn't they show the parents? What was a, did Antonucci get the idea from peanuts? Hmm. I wish I had an answer for you, bro. I don't. I like, I honestly don't. He never, ever, never gave us any of like the deeper workings of like, like for instance, and it's only through Facebook. And then in like the last couple of years, he started to share 
like he'll share a photo or he'll share like a couple, I don't know, a couple months ago, he shared the basically what was the inspiration be um, on the, uh, on the theme song. Right. Cause we didn't know, I didn't know. Right. But it was amazing. So there was definitely an Antonucci family connection mm-hmm. in that. You know what I mean? So probably with not showing the parents, it's probably something like that. It's like, ah, and I'm waving my hands a lot, right? I'm looking at it. That's up. great. Huh? <laughs> I don't know. Like, I remember this one YouTube channel did a, a whole in-depth video explaining they think that Plank is really alive. And it's like, <laughs> we come uh-huh. on. This thing. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. I don't think he is, but hey, we can still you know, leave. Hmm? Yeah. Well, that's all the time we have today. Thank you, Matt, for so much for joining me today. I am your host, Stephen. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt Hill. Stephen! Fans out there! Thank you, you guys. Thanks for giving me a great life. And uh, I feel very honored. So thank you so much, you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah.